So I guess this is the part where I introduce myself. My name is Nick Spruck and I'm a photographer and videographer based in Southern California. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite film cameras, the Mamiya RZ67. So in this video, I'm gonna highlight some of the features of this camera, as well as show you a little behind the scenes video of a recent photo shoot I did in Berkeley, California. But first, let's talk about the history of this camera. The Mamiya RZ67 is a medium format film camera that was released in 1982. It produces a six x seven centimeter negative, resulting in a higher resolution, better quality image compared to that of your traditional 35 millimeter camera. Overall, what this means is that you have a larger image with higher resolution, resulting in a better quality photo and more depth of field. Arguably the most famous photo that was taken with this camera was by former National Geographic photographer Charles O'Rear, who shot the famous photo named Bliss in 1996, or better known as the Windows XP desktop background with the green grass and the blue sky. This camera was originally intended to be used in a studio setting because of its flash sync capabilities up to 1 400th of a second, but that doesn't mean that you can't use this camera out in the field. This camera is completely module, which means you could change everything from the film back to the viewfinder to any way you see fit. It comes with a waist level viewfinder that you could swap out with an optional eye level viewfinder, but overall I've been really enjoying shooting with the waist level viewfinder because of the unique angle you get, especially when shooting portraits. There's just something about shooting on a waist level camera that gives you this unique angle looking up at your subject that you could almost always tell was shot through a waist level viewfinder. There are also optional film backs that you could purchase for this camera. If you don't want to shoot a six by seven centimeter negative, you have the option to purchase a six by six film back or a six by 4.5. The reason why you might want to do this is because with a six by seven centimeter negative, you only get 10 shots per roll versus a six by 4.5 where you get 16 shots. But a six by seven centimeter negative results in a larger image with more depth of field. So you want to keep that in mind as well. There's also a model before and a model after this camera. The model before was released in 1970 and was named the RB67. The RB stood for the revolving film back, which is a feature on these cameras where you can flip a switch on the side of the body and rotate the film back 90 degrees, resulting in a horizontal versus vertical image without having to actually spin the camera itself. The RB model was an all mechanical model compared to the RZ, which is electronic. So with the RB, you can fire the shutter without having a battery versus with the RZ, you need a battery in order to fire the shutter because it's an electronic shutter. The model after this was the RZ67 Pro 2, which was released in 1995. There are minor differences between the RZ67 Pro and the RZ67 Pro 2 those being half stop shutter speeds and a fine focus and knob. So now let's get into the images that this camera produces. All right, so today we're up in Berkeley and we're shooting some medium format portraits. I contacted Nicole, who I met off of Instagram, and we're just gonna be walking around the area taking some portraits. <laughs> Typically, I like to rate my film one stop below box speed. Now, the reason why I do this is because you get more detail in the shadows. Now, if you shoot digital, it's the complete opposite. When shooting digitally, you would wanna expose for the highlights and you could bump up the shadows later in pose. But with film, it's a little bit different. If there's no information in the shadows, you can't recover anything versus if there's too much information in the highlights, color negative film retains information in the highlights that you could bring back in post more than you could bring back the shadows. 
Now the Mamiya RZ67 and the waist level viewfinder, there's no light meter built into the camera. But with the optional eye level viewfinder, there is a light meter built in. But even if I had this, I would much rather prefer to rate my film with a handheld light meter as I usually do, because you typically tend to get a more accurate reading with a Sekonic light meter or other various handheld light meters. Now, being a former automotive painter, I have a love and appreciation for old vintage cars. So I like to incorporate that into some of my portrait work as well. I feel like the nostalgic feel of vintage cars translates well to the nostalgic feel that film photography gives. And to no surprise, we found an old vintage car right down the road from where I met up with Nicole. So we decided to stop and take a couple portraits of her in front of it. then proceeded to go into some of the neighborhoods around Berkeley to get more of a suburb type feel for the shoot and had Nicole pose in front of some of the houses. Ultimately we just used our surroundings to our advantage and used things like a local garage as a backdrop and had her sit on some stairs outside of the building. The neighborhoods around Northern California are absolutely beautiful, especially with all the blooming flowers, so we use that to our advantage as well. I shot four rolls of film throughout the day, all of which were on Kodak's Portra series film stock. Portra is a color negative film and it's my usual go-to because of its natural skin tones, its low grain and its overall color profile. So overall, my experience with this camera has been exceptional. I don't regret bringing it places even though it is a larger camera. And the images that it produces are some of the sharpest images that I've seen out of a film camera. And I think that's the reason why it's a favorite amongst many film photographers. So there you have it guys. If you like this video, leave a comment down below for future video suggestions. Subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you in the next one.